Okay, once I get those flakes around both sides that we talked about, I'm going to go ahead and clean this thing up again and get those edges softened down so I can see where the platforms are. Break it from both sides. Okay. All right. Starting to look pretty good. I like it. Okay, I've got a, just a piece of copper pipe right here, man. You can buy this thing at Lowe's or anywhere else. I've smashed one end of it. And I'm just using this to rake down these edges. And I'm on the convex side because I want to be able to flake more off of that side. So I want to bring those edges up. So what I'm doing is, keeping in mind the shape of the piece that I want, I'm just lightly going over this edge just to kind of bring it up. Not getting real rough with it. Okay. There we go. Get rid of that glass. We'll break her up and we'll be ready to go. Okay, guys, we're starting to get what we want here. Starting to get flat. Not have so much convexity on the one side. Starting to take a little bit of shape here. We'll just keep working on it and we'll get right back to you. Okay guys, we're starting to get what we want now. Now we're looking for our symmetry. We're trying to make sure that we get everything evened up as we go, getting this piece shaped that we want it finally. Now we're just going to keep down thinning it down a little bit and finish it off. Glass is real touchy, guys. You don't doesn't take a whole lot to nap glass. It's real good to practice with because it's pretty easy to flake. And you'll break a hundred of these. I already broke a chunk out of this one. I really didn't want it to come out, but you just got to be careful with it. Work with it and practice with it, and just do it over and over and over again until you get it right and get used to where you got to support the piece at, so you don't break it. Things like that. Practice looking for your platforms, creating platforms. Glass is a really good medium to practice on. And it's pretty abundant in the woods nowadays, so it'll make a mighty fine killing arrowhead when you're done with it. I'll get back to you. Really starting to take shape now. Now it's pretty much final shaping and just taking some sharpening flakes off of it. I'd like to take another series of flakes off this back side, this flat side. But uh, look at this thing, it's pretty flat and pretty thin. Once I sharpen this bad boy up, that's about a one to one ratio arrowhead which is really not what you want for big game you really want two to one but this this would kill a deer easy enough i can guarantee it okay guys put the final touch on this arrowhead i pulled this nail out a little bit and it just screws in there just got set screws in there to hold it i'm gonna i want to sharpen this thing up a little bit on this piece of stone i've got here i want a good sharp point on this thing for busting off little bitty small sharpening flakes and for notching this thing put it on an arrow shaft so I don't have a whole lot of tools out here with me today, guys. You don't really need a whole lot for this stuff. Um, there's nothing I've got here that you can't make yourself. Most of it's made out of copper. This is just a broken sandstone from my grinder. Copper tubing, solid piece of copper billet, and a copper nail on the end of a piece of Delron. I mean, none of this stuff is anything that you can't make yourself. I do have some of this stuff I can put on my website for sale if anybody wants it. And we're going to get right back on this point, but... I tell you what, she's looking pretty good, boys. She's looking pretty good. Okay, when you get them down to this finishing stage, guys, and you're just taking little bitty flakes out of them to sharpen them up, that's when they're the easiest to break, especially at the tip. So you got to be real careful when you're doing this. And make sure you support that piece. Don't get up on top of it where it can flex and break. Stay back on it. Just support it and just barely catch those edges because you don't want to break it at this point. I haven't notched it yet, but I've already got about a half hour, 45 minutes in this one and I'd hate to have it break off on me now. So I'm really taking my time and going slow just to make sure that don't happen. Just catching those platforms and popping them. Okay guys, I hope you can see this. Pretty happy with this right now. I think we're going to 
sharpen it up just a little bit, maybe get this corner a little bit more defined like this one is, and then we're going to notch it. Be ready to put this on an arrow. Okay, I'm notching this thing, guys, and I'm just taking little bitty, little bitty flakes. Got to have it just a little bit of time. Just breaking that cone out and then going back to the other side. Breaking that cone out and kind of using that copper to, to braid the edge as I go to keep it strong. And I'm not going to make a real deep notch in there. Matter of fact, I'm probably not going to go any deeper than that. Um, if I get the other one the same as that one is, I'll be pretty happy with that. And I think that's what we're going to leave it at and call it a day when we get to that point. So that's a pretty good little hunting point right there, I'd say. You gotta be real careful with this stuff that you're doing like this because I'm telling you this is where you this is where you'll ruin a point at. If you don't think that notch is gonna go in there deep enough, you're just using that thing for a hunting point. It don't have to be perfect. If it's not exactly perfectly symmetrical, you're using it for a hunting point, don't take a chance on breaking it. You're always gonna make more of them as time goes by, so you're not trying to make an artifact. Okay. I need to go a little bit deeper on this side and then I'll be done. Let's see what I can do to get that done and I'll show it to you when she's finished, fellas. Alright. Okay, guys. There's what we started with. And right there's what we ended with. Hope you guys have enjoyed this segment on Arrowhead from Glass. I appreciate you joining me here on Wilderness Outfitters Archery. Thank you very much. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, napping here. We made that glass arrowhead. I'll tell you, there's a couple things that prompted me to make that video. Uh, a couple things that have happened over the last two or three weeks. Um, one, I saw a video on YouTube where a guy had made an arrowhead out of glass. And I thought, man, that curved piece of glass isn't going to fly very good, being a bow hunter myself. So I thought I'd show you how to do that the right way. Um, it is a good way to practice flint napping. There's no question about it. Glass is easy to work with. It's easy to find. Um, so I thought I'd show you that. And then I was talking yesterday coincidentally to the guy from Backland Outdoors and uh, we're talking about shooting a primitive hunting video uh, this summer possibly and he was talking about how much he loves primitive and he's been practicing flint napping and things like that and I was telling him uh, you know how easy glasses as a medium to practice on and that's kind of what prompted this video today so I hope you enjoyed it we're gonna have a lot more complicated and more instructional flint napping videos in our virtual classroom I've got some guest instructors that are absolute expert flint nappers way better than I am and they're gonna go through we're gonna make a series of videos on flint napping that will be step-by-step -step instructions and there'll definitely be some serious flint napping videos but they'll only be available in our virtual classroom I appreciate your support and thank you for joining me here on Wilderness Outfitters Archery home of the Pathfinder School